Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today I'm going to provide you some ideas for some winter survival gear, things you may not have considered. And if you didn't know yet, winter is definitely going to be a killer in the instance of any sort of localized regional global collapse. So let's get to it. Here in Canada, the overwhelming majority of people live in places where the temperature is going to drop well below zero in the winter time, and most of them rely on natural gas, which of course, in most cases, relies on electricity in order to regulate it. So if you're not blessed with the privilege of geothermal or solar heating options, which 99% of people in Canada are not, then you should probably start taking some notes. Now winter is one of those seasons that's often overlooked in emergency preparedness perhaps because it's quite the daunting feat in order to truly prepare to survive winter long term. In Canada, being that winter is six months out of the year, it's very foolish to not prepare for it. The fact is that winter can and absolutely will kill you. Exposure is one of the first things that people die from in survival situations in the wilderness and that's going to be the exact same principle that happens in the instance of a grid down survival whether urban or rural. Now this list that I'm going to provide you is not entirely comprehensive and it's not going to include all of the typical survival gear you would normally hear about so there is likely many things that could be added to this list. Alright so the first thing you're going to want for a bug in situation even a bug out situation possibly if you had a larger party is some way to heat your space. So thanks to some feedback from my subscribers last year I went and picked myself up a Mr. Heater propane heater and based on the research I've done propane is one of the best options for home heating uh, better than kerosene from what I know and of course propane is going to store for a long period of time so definitely want to get yourself some kind of propane heater if you don't have the luxury of having a wood stove or those geothermal options I talked about. Number two is going to be a sled or a pulk so I've talked about the importance of sleds or pulks for winter bug out scenarios before obviously they can be used to transport large amounts of cargo with minimal energy expenditure they could be used to move people wounded people and of course they're going to have hunting applications and resource acquisition applications so a sled in winter is definitely going to be an awesome emergency preparedness prep. Number three is going to be tea lights or any sort of cheap candle that you can find. Obviously they're going to provide you with lighting and they're also going to provide you with a small amount of BTUs to help you keep your space warm. Number four is any sort of mylar lined cooler that you can use in conjunction with some sort of micro heating source like a hand warmer or something to that effect in order to keep things like food, water, batteries, uh, various electronics at a room temperature where they're going to function as you would like them to. Number five of course is going to be hand warmers. Try to keep as many as possible. They do have an expiration date and you may want to look into ways to optimally store them to extend that expiration date. So number six is going to be some sort of kinetic energy generator so that could be a hand crank generator or a pedal power generator like the KTOR power box that I've reviewed on this channel before. It's going to keep you moving, it's going to keep your core temperature up and it's going to allow you to generate a significant amount of electricity at the same time. Number seven of course is going to be copious amounts of food because of course in the winter and in cold climates people's bodies burn more calories in order to stay warm just like a furnace needs more fuel to keep a house warm in the cold days during the winter so does your body need more calories to support it uh, to get through those cold nights in the winter. Number eight is going to be some kind of winterized duct tape something that's going to stand up to the rigors of winter so an all season all weather duct tape would be a useful prep to add to your winter emergency preparedness gear. Number nine is a full tank of gas so no matter what season it is you should always at least have one vehicle with a full tank of gas in case you ever needed to uh, have some sort of emergency heating at least in the short term or of course if you needed to transport yourself to a safe location. Number 10 is Mylar emergency blankets. So these are typically pretty cheap. Usually you can get them for a dollar from any dollar store or Walmart. You might want to get yourself a reasonable quality just so they're not going to degrade too fast over time. You can also splurge on bivy sacks which are a bit more expensive but once again they're probably a bit higher quality 
Obviously, you can insulate small areas with these. You can make shelters. You can use them for personal heating. And of course, they may have vital medical applications in cold climates as well. Number 11 would be to fill the bathtub with hot water if the power ever did go out in the winter time because it may be the last hot bath you see in your home for a while. Another recommendation I heard is that you should keep your taps partially open and at least dripping just to can maintain that constant water flow to prevent or at least slow the freezing of the pipes. Number 12 is some sort of ice melt or salt to help you manage the ice and snow and give you some traction be it on foot or in a vehicle. Number 13 would be a carbon monoxide sensor if you're planning on using any sort of uh, combustible gas or even wood stove or something of that effect to heat your home, you're going to want to have a carbon monoxide sensor to make sure that you're not inhaling any sort of toxins. Number 14 is going to be some sort of insulated water storage to prevent your water from freezing up. Number 16, any sort of animal furs or natural furs as external clothing layers are going to be great. Uh, synthetics are usually great for base layers, but I would always trust uh, some sort of animal fur over uh, your synthetic base layer to get that real protection whether it be in the form of mucklucks or rabbit fur hats, goose down jackets, uh, anything that comes from nature is usually a lot more intelligent in terms of keeping animals warm than man at least is at this point in time. So animal fur is excellent for insulation and of course with that comes various clothing and blankets that you're going to want to stock up on as well. Number 17 is any amount of wood or combustibles that you can store. Once again if you have propane, uh, storing as much as you legally can in a safe place would be a good option. Number 18 is going to be any sort of personal traction device. So Catula micro spikes and yak tracks are the ones that I currently use and of course these are going to give you the advantage if you were outside and you had to commute somewhere on foot. Number 19 is going to be a fire extinguisher because when you inevitably do have to make a fire in your home if the grid was down long enough which most people will unfortunately if they're left with no other option and you can't really blame them you're going to want some way of putting out that fire in case it got out of control. Number 20, and this one is probably not commonly thought about, is a barbecue. So not only can a barbecue be used for cooking outside, and you know it's probably a better idea to use it outside of course, but it could also uh, be a means of generating heat as well if it was a last ditch thing. Number 21 is snowshoes, so that's going to minimize energy requirements when you're out making runs. Number 22, depending on where you are, once again, if there's a lot of snow, you're going to want some protective eyewear to prevent snow blindness. Number 23 is one that's perhaps more useful in a vehicle, but that's going to be emergency flares for signaling. Number 24 is going to be your communications, so it's good to have some sort of radio which is capable of weather band and maybe even shortwave. Number 25 is a shovel, serves a bunch of obvious functions. So a snowmobile would be a great thing to have in the winter time if you could afford it. Some sort of built-in wood stove into your house or natural way of heating your home as I've talked about before. In your vehicle you're definitely going to want the obvious things like a booster cables, uh, perhaps a manual winch and some way of gaining traction. So it could be kitty litter, uh, you could get some spikes, could get some chains for your tires. You're definitely going to want some premium face protection, especially if the temperature drops below 20 and the wind chill factor is up. The cold Avenger balaclava is probably a good option for those of you in that type of climate. Another thing to look into is thermal reflective gear. So there's a lot of this stuff coming out nowadays. You can get insoles that are thermal reflective, insulated liners. You can also check out the Omni Heat thermal reflective line which offers uh, clothing which integrates that mylar based uh, reflective heating system into its clothing while allowing for some breathability so go check that out as well and last but not least number 33 will be fat bikes if you need to get around in the winter time that might be the way to do it if you don't have a sled dog team and the gasolines all run dry check out the fat bikes anyways i hope this list has been useful to you Please post your comments below if you think there's anything that I've missed that you might find useful. I'm always looking to expand my knowledge of winter survival because as I've said before, it's such a vital component to Canadian winter preparedness that you can't consider yourself a Canadian prepper 
if you're not fully prepared to endure a winter. So let's work on this together and let's prepare for the long winter that's to come. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but that's just how it is. Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper Out. Check out the Canadian Preppers Network blog, an excellent resource for survivalists and preppers.